Okay, I'm going to attempt to make this in one take. I'll turn the light on a little bit so you can see. This is my new generator. Uh, I hooked up a uh, something to put a load on it. I'll turn the light on a little bit brighter. I screw that screw in, it puts a load on the wheel to slow it down. I have, i turn off one light. Okay. The coil on the left uh, is, is the trigger coil from the primary battery, 12 volt battery, it's in the box. It'll fire that coil, the energy coming off the coil, because it's a bi coil, the energy coming off of the coil goes to this capacitor right here. Here, I'll turn the light on so I can see. Um, then this capacitor I'm using as the primary battery for the second coil. There's two separate circuits. They're not hooked together except for uh, through this capacitor. This one's charging the capacitor while it's being the primary battery for the second coil. And what I wanted to show you is basically the RPM affects the charge uh, pretty dramatically. I have it set up now so that the current draw from the primary battery to the primary coil is about the same as the current draw from the capacitor to the second coil. Even though the capacitor, the voltage is going to be a whole lot less than 12 volts. Uh, I could set it up so it didn't draw as much and then the capacitor would charge better, but I thought just for the sake of keeping things simple, um, I'd have them draw the same amount of current. Now, the energy that, that it's using, uh, not from the battery, but the energy, uh, you can call it radiant energy or uh, static electricity, I think it's all the same. Uh, we all know that we can uh, charge ourselves up with static electricity, shuffling across the carpet in our socks, and point at somebody, get close enough, and discharge that energy. So we're kind of like our own power station. That's just one way to gather the energy from the air. This is, this is another way. This is similar to a magneto uh, on your lawnmower uh, back in the day. Uh, it would gather the energy. Uh, it, it, the points would uh, collapse the coil. The energy would go through a condenser and then to the plug to fire. That's not, you know, and that's pretty much what this is. It's just a motor too. These are bi filer coils. They have two windings. One for a trigger to pulse the motor and the other one to pick up the energy. And, uh, like I said, the first coil is uh, being pulsed by a battery that's in the box. The energy from that coil goes to the capacitor. The capacitor is the primary battery for the second coil. And then these are the meters. And uh, the first one is the primary milliamps. And then the second one is the primary capacitor milliamps. And then the capacitor voltage. So I'll start it up. And it's fairly noisy because the bearings are pretty well shot, but uh, it still works. So. so right now I'll start it up without a load on it, and then we'll see where the meters, where the readings end up, and I'll mark them down on top. And then after that I'll put a load on it and show you what the readings are after that. Okay, so this is going to take a second. See, I have this backed up all the way. Yeah, it's backed up all the way. It'll take a second. But these are the readings. I'll just hold right here so we can see what's going on. Primary batteries coming up with another. See how it dropped off the capacitor? The primary battery will do the same here in a second. See it dropping back off? I'm not really sure why it does that. I mean, the wheel's speeding up at the same time. And uh, now it's using the energy from the capacitor. And uh, the capacitor will come down well under 4 volts. Uh, and then, like I said, when it uh, maxes out speed, we'll write down the RPM or the readings on the motor meters. Everything but the open. So this will just take a second. And you can hear the batteries or, or the bearings are doing too good. And the 
separate circuits. Primary battery on the left, charge on the right. And the charge is going to the capacitor. And then from the capacitor it comes back to the primary on the second coil. And then the two on the right are for the charge battery that's right underneath it. You can see the battery there. One's charged and one's a, one's a primary for this coil and the other one's a charge battery off of this coil. set so I can't touch the wheel with it but it's pretty close. I'll show you when I get it in there. Almost there. And this tip. Okay. Well it's slowing down. Let's watch what the meters do. Uh, won't change. 
and the capacitor will start filling up. The only time the primary coil will change is when I turn the, that uh, capacitor coil back on and the motor speeds up, then it'll, it'll change. It'll go up and back down again. But before I do that, I just want to wait for it to settle and then uh, I'll mark down the, the meter readings. And it's pretty close to Eventually it'll slow down a little bit more and make sure it's screwed in all the way. It's got a pretty good load on it. You see the distance between there where it's almost touching that wheel. Pretty close. And it's right in line with the magnet so it's Shuffling it down. So we have 90, 80, 530. So we'll write that down. Five thirty one, but to be fair, I'll write five thirty. But you can see the difference when I put a load on it, it draws less milliamps from the battery. The capacitor stays about the same as far as current draw, and the capacitor comes up about a volt. So I'm using less energy, putting a load on it and the capacitor is charging more. And like I said, if it was a direct relation to input versus output of the coil, uh, they wouldn't be doing this. Now, right here is a switch. Let's see it here. That I can shut off and turn this coil off that uh, is drawing energy out of the capacitor. So now you'll see the middle one, which is the primary capacitor it'll go dead there shut it off now the capacitors filling up and then this here will slow down the primary battery will draw less because the wheels slowing down and I don't know if it'll stay running it might not but uh, I'll turn it back on when it hits around 5 50 milliamps Get the switch off. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Now it's back on. Okay, now it's drawing. Now it's taking the energy that it charged up in the capacitor. And it should start speeding up here. I'll let it slow it down too far. Because it's still got that uh, pretty serious load on it. I think, yeah, it's speeding up. I said, I just thought I heard it speeding up a little bit. But there you can tell when I turned off that coil, it didn't change the primary milliamps uh, on the first coil. Which kind of proves that there's no direct relation between the energy coming from the battery and the output of that coil. There's virtually no relation at all except for the, the speed of the rotor. The faster the rotor turns, the uh, in some ways, faster the rotor turns the more energy output but as I showed when I put a load on it and the wheel is turning slower you get a greater output the input to output ratio changes inputs less outputs more so you get more for less and that's what I wanted to show you okay, so it's speeding up and it's uh, faster slowing down I don't believe the capacitor will go under 5 volts and then it will start going back up. And I took it down to 50 milliamps and then turned that capacitor, the trigger 
coil on the, from the capacitor on and it started speeding up. And that's a serious, that's a pretty serious load for a little wheel. So I just wanted to show you this and uh, thanks for watching. God bless.